Hello everyone, welcome back to Medical Coding Club. So last video I have discussed uh, ICD-10 Chapter 1 HIV guideline. Today I am going to discuss uh, from the Chapter 1 only, but it's a different guideline which is regarding sepsis. So sepsis is very important. So let's understand uh, all the guidelines regarding sepsis, severe sepsis and septic shock and everything. So let's begin. So yes, in this video I am going to cover, uh, just I am introducing you to sepsis and then sepsis coding guideline, severe sepsis coding, septic shock coding, sepsis complicating pregnancy, sepsis with post procedural infection, sepsis with localized infection and in the last segment I have added few questions which are guideline based and we will we'll see that also. So let's understand our first coding guideline for coding sepsis. So before that, what is sepsis? So sepsis is a life-threatening condition that occurs when the body's response to an infection causes widespread inflammation leading to a tissue damage or organ dysfunction. Next, while coding for sepsis, we have to assign the code for the underlying infection and if the organism is unspecified, we will be using A41.9. A41.9 is sepsis unspecified organism. So if the provider mention uh, the whatever the organism has found out, the particular organism code also we will be assigning with the sepsis. So example, you can see if patient has documented sepsis due to E. coli. So assign the code A41.51. So it is for equally sepsis. So A41.51 is for equally of sepsis. So here organism is equally. Next, note only assign R65.2 that is severe sepsis if there is a documentation of severe sepsis or acute organ dysfunction. So when we are coding for severe sepsis, we always have to look for the documentation of severe sepsis or organ dysfunction then only we can use this additionally so next guideline is for so before going to our next coding guideline we'll see few key points so the first point negative or inconclusive blood culture sepsis can still be coded if it is clinically evident so if provider is saying that sepsis is there that is enough for us the diagnostic statement of provider is enough we don't have to see the uh, you know lab result say for example lab is negative but provider is saying sepsis positive or sepsis is diagnosed then we will go with the provider documentation and we will not check the lab result or or we will not consider the inconclusive blood culture so next point urosepsis this is a non-specific term and does not automatically mean sepsis and query the provider if it is needed Okay, so sometime in the medical record, uh, they will be documenting urosepsis. Okay, by seeing urosepsis, coder will assume there is a documentation for sepsis. Okay, so urosepsis is different, sepsis is different. And urosepsis is a non-specific term and we don't have any ICD for that. Okay, so we should ignore or if it is needed, we have to query the provider. And next guideline. Next uh, point, sepsis with organ dysfunction. So if the patient has a sepsis and associated organ dysfunction, this may be coded as severe sepsis. Okay, this is important. Sometime in the questions, you will see sepsis documentation and organ dysfunction document. Okay, so many will think like we have to code sepsis first that A41 and next we directly we have to code the organ dysfunction since severe sepsis is not documented but that is not the fact so you you should understand clearly sepsis then severe sepsis after that the next complication will be organ dysfunction okay so that is why if they are documenting sepsis and organ dysfunction defaultly we have to code for severe sepsis also example you can see if the patient has sepsis with acute kidney failure patient has sepsis with organ dysfunction okay so what we can code so sepsis code a41.9 since the organism is not found 
sepsis unspecified we have coded and next we have to code for severe sepsis r65.20 that is severe sepsis without septic shock and along with n17.9 which is acute kidney failure unspecified okay so the sequencing first be sepsis should be first severe sepsis should be secondary diagnosis and then last organ dysfunction we can code it so next coming to coding severe sepsis as we already discussed severe sepsis requires two code the first one the infection which is sepsis code as primary and secondary we will be assigning severe sepsis r65.2 series 20 r65.20 is for severe sepsis without septic shock and r65.21 is for uh, with septic shock so example you can see here if the patient has severe sepsis due to streptococcus with acute respiratory failure so here patient is having sepsis severe sepsis and also organism also they have found out so firstly we are coding a40.0 sepsis due to streptococcus and next code secondary code r65.20 which is severe sepsis without septic shock and at last j96.00 that is acute respiratory failure unspecified okay so this coding is correct next coming to septic shock so septic shock is a severe form of sepsis where septic shock can affect circulatory and metabolic abnormalities that results in dangerously low blood pressure and despite of fluid resurrection leading to potential multi organ failure okay so it's a kind of infection with the shock where it can affect the circulatory and metabolic abnormalities and finally it can lead up to a multiple organ failure so coding sequence the systemic infection first followed by r65.21 so here sepsis code whether it is uh, you know having organism or unspecified organism a41.9 will be coded first secondary if septic shock is documented we will be coding r65.21 okay so example you can see for a septic shock due to staphylococcus assign septic shock due to staphylococcus okay so here firstly we have coded sepsis and the organism is staphylococcus a4101 the code will come next we are coding r65.21 which is severe sepsis with septic shock okay so this is how we will sequence for septic shock so next we'll understand about sequencing of severe sepsis so we have two scenarios here the first one is if severe sepsis is present on admission so the patient chief encounter is uh, sepsis then we will be coding sepsis as a primary code okay and if severe sepsis develops after admission then assign it as a secondary diagnosis so by seeing example you will easily understand see this patient admitted for pneumonia develops a severe sepsis during the stay okay so here our primary diagnosis should be pneumonia because patient admitted for pneumonia okay next code a41.9 it is sepsis code followed by we will be coding uh, severe sepsis without septic shock code okay so next sepsis with localized infection so patient is having sepsis also with that some localized infection so example sepsis with cellulitis so what what we have to sequence first sequence the systemic infection code first followed by localized infection code so we have the infection is sepsis so we will be coding sepsis as a primary and localized infection that is cellulitis will be coding it as secondary code okay so this is the guideline regarding sepsis with localized infection next sepsis due to post procedural infection so here again document the relationship between infection and procedure it is important so they should specify that 
due to the procedure due to previous surgery now patient is having sepsis okay so in this case what we can uh, sequence sequence the infection code related to the procedure first then sepsis code and if needed severe sepsis code okay so example you can see here sepsis after a surgical wound infection also severe sepsis documented so here we have to first code for surgical wound infection since it is a post procedural infection so we'll be coding t81.4 series primary code next we will be coding sepsis unspecified organism and later we will be coding r65.20 okay so next we have non infectious conditions leading to sepsis so in cases where non infection conditions like trauma causes sepsis assign the non infectious condition code first then sepsis code and severe sepsis code so it is the uh, sepsis is due to some other non infectious conditions like trauma so here we have to give priority to trauma and we have to assign the non infectious code primary diagnosis and secondary we will be coding sepsis and if severe sepsis is there and followed by sepsis we will be coding severe sepsis next sepsis sepsis and septic shock complicating abortion pregnancy and newborn so we have a separate chapter 15 guidelines and chapter 16 guideline we can refer this later and last hemolytic uh, uremic syndrome associated with sepsis so here the reason of admission is hemolytic uh, uremic syndrome then we have to assign uremic syndrome as a primary code and later we will be assigning sepsis as a secondary code okay so d59.31 infection associated with hemolytic uremic syndrome as a principal diagnosis nothing but primary diagnosis and secondary we have to code as sepsis or severe sepsis okay so these are the prominent guidelines we have for uh, sepsis concept okay so uh, apart from this we don't have any you know so so we'll see few practice questions regarding sepsis coding guideline so first question patient is admitted with the equally sepsis and develops acute renal failure during the stay how should this be coded so we know we have a equally sepsis so we have organism code also along with the sepsis and develops acute renal failure so here we have documentation for infection and then severe sepsis and organ failure okay so don't think like severe sepsis is not documented so we should not code for severe sepsis if organ dysfunction is there then defaultly we have to take the severe sepsis also so in option a you can see only sepsis and organ dysfunction uh, is documented in option b sepsis with equally and uh, severe sepsis without septic shock and lastly renal failure okay so but option c firstly the first sequence is they have just given severe sepsis as primary so it is wrong and option b also wrong option a also wrong correct answer should be option b okay so this is how it works and then we'll see the next question so next question patient is diagnosed with urosepsis what is the correct coding action so here code as sepsis assign code as urinary tract infection do not code until further clarification is obtained and assign the code r65.2 for severe sepsis so as i already mentioned urosepsis is a non specific term and we don't have any icd and we should not consider urosepsis as 
sepsis okay so we have to just query the provider option c is correct do not code until the further clarification is obtained so next question 3 patient was admitted for pneumonia and sepsis developed after admission what is the correct sequencing of the diagnosis so here patient is admitted for pneumonia and later the patient developed sepsis so here our reason for encounter should be coded first pneumonia should be coded first then we can code sepsis option b is correct So next question, patient has a severe sepsis with septic shock due to post-procedural wound infection, which, which code should be assigned? So here, uh, this question is regarding post-procedural coding guideline. So whenever we have the sepsis due to post-procedural infection, we will be coding our primary code as post-procedural infection. Next, we will be coding sepsis. And last, we will be coding severe sepsis or septic shock. So here in our question, it is severe sepsis with septic shock. So we have a code a T81.12, so which says post-procedural septic shock. Okay, so T81.4 is for our uh, post-procedural infection. Next, we are coding sepsis unspecified. And last, we are coding sepsis with post-procedural septic shock so answer c is correct okay so this is how we will code it so that's all guys thank you for watching uh, please do subscribe to my channel and if you like the video please do comment so that i can come up with the other chapter guidelines as well Okay, and if you are a beginner, please do join my basic to advanced medical coding course where I'll train everything from beginning to advanced level. Thank you all. Thank you for watching.